Hi, I'm Rod Ubrine, Citizen Science Data Analyst with the ACT Government. Today I'm presenting on habitat connectivity and population parameters of the eastern long-necked turtle in urban and suburban wetlands in the Australian Capital Territory. There are around 50 citizen science field volunteers on the project who help with weighing turtles, uh, capturing the turtles, and measuring the turtles, and data entry. Uh, and in addition to that, Bruno and Anka Maria from the Gin and Dera Catchment Group uh, were the main designers and manager of the project with some assistance from Arthur from University of Canberra and myself. The animal we were studying in the project is the Eastern Longneck Turtle. It's widely distributed through uh, southeastern Australia here and generally of relatively high abundance through this distribution. Uh, its normal habitat is in river, rivers, billabongs, lakes, farm dams. But we're interested in the turtle in the urban environment. And in the urban environment, urban stormwater ponds make ideal habitats for the turtle to colonise in these urban environments. The eastern long-necked turtle is well adapted to life in southeastern Australia. Uh, it utilises up to two to three wetlands a year. It can move over land or migrate over land with distances up to five kilometres. It can estivate in the terrestrial environment for up to 480 days and has a low desiccation rate. And all these adaptations make it suitable for the flood dry or flood drought cycles that we typically get in southeastern Australia. Now this slide shows a, a typical migration route of the eastern longneck turtle on the edge of Canberra between two ponds um, that's known from previous work on the turtle and tracking of the turtle. So the pond on the right has an ephemeral pond within a reserve area and the pond on the left is a large pond that's a permanent water body. We know that when the pond on the right dries up, the turtle moves down to the larger permanent water body. And then again, when conditions are more favorable in the reserve area, the turtles return to that pond. So there's regular migrations backwards and forwards. While we know turtles move backwards and forwards between ponds, we also know that what's between the ponds affects the turtle's ability to move between those ponds. So in an urban envir environment, there's lots of barriers um, to the movement between ponds. We're interested to know how these barriers affect the movement and also how that restriction on movement may affect population parameters in the populations in different types of urban environments. To start to develop some answers to these questions, we surveyed two populations of turtles. One in the inner north of Canberra, in a quite dense urban area. And you can see on the slide here, the four ponds with a, a dense urban environment or urban matrix between these ponds. From a close up of one of these ponds in the inner north area, we can see that it's not just the area between the ponds that is significantly altered, the channel that joins them in this case is a concrete stormwater channel. Um, and this stormwater channel is designed to move water quickly away from urban areas to protect infrastructure, but it means it dries up really quickly after rain, uh, significantly altering the hydrology and limiting that channel for the turtles to move through. The second population that we studied was in the peri-urban environment. Uh, and you can see on the slide here, between the ponds is significantly different to what we saw in that inner north urban environment. Uh, you can see that there's lots of reserve area here, and this is a much more natural environment for the turtles to move through if they're making terrestrial migrations between these ponds. If we look at a close up of one of the peri urban ponds, we can see it's not just the terrestrial matrix between the ponds that's different. But the channel between the ponds here is still a natural creek line rather than an artificial stormwater channel. And after rain, this will retain water for a much longer period. And even when it dries up, it's likely to be much more easy or favorable for the turtles to move through and migrate through between ponds 
than the concrete stormwater channel that we see in the urban environment. So we're one year into the project and the data I'll be presenting today is from the pilot for the project data that was collected between September 2020 and March 2021. The initial thing that we were interested in between the urban and peri-urban populations was the abundance of turtles. And we planned to do this by estimating the population sizes through capture, mark, recapture methods. However, our number of captures wasn't enough to do this in the first year. So what I'm presenting here is the total number of captures. In the urban environment, we had 29 turtles with three recaptures. And in the peri-urban environment, we had 118 turtles with nine recaptures. So while this isn't enough to accurately estimate the population size, it gives us a good idea that the turtles in the peri-urban environment are likely to be much more abundant than those in the urban environment. As well as the overall population size or abundance of the turtles in the different urban environments, some of the population parameters can also return interesting information about the health of these populations in the different urban environments. And the size classes of the turtles we caught in the different urban environments return some interesting information. Uh, here you can see the size frequency distribution of the turtles caught in the peri-urban environment. And you can see, A, it's relatively normally distributed, but more importantly, that green box on the left indicates the juvenile size classes. And we can see here that turtles were caught from the range of these juvenile size classes. And this indicates that there's regular recruitment in this population, and therefore it's likely to be a viable population. In contrast, here's the size frequency distribution from the urban population. And we can see that the population isn't as equally represented or as normally distributed as the one from the peri-urban environment. But also if we focus in on that green box on the left that indicates the juvenile size classes, we can see that there's some size classes missing. And this is likely to indicate that recruitment is sporadic in this environment or even potentially that it's a sink population where recruitment isn't effectively occurring. So if we look at the urban environment, how it might affect some of these population parameters. Uh, firstly, overland migrations can't really occur in this urban environment because of all the barriers through. So the means to migration between the ponds is through the stormwater channel. And we can see that in the dry period, these stormwater channels are completely dried up. And while well, it's possible for the turtles to move down, it's not a hospitable environment for them and it's a difficult migration for the turtles to make. When it rains, the stormwater channels do flow and are wet, but because of the nature of the channels, they only stay this way for a short period of time and then quickly dry out. So again, there is connectivity, but it's only for a short period of time, and this would significantly limit the potential to colonize, but then also the potential for movement between the subpopulations in these urban ponds. So if we compare this to the peri-urban ponds and the connectivity between those, from a terrestrial sense, there's that reserve area that would always allow for connection between the ponds, regardless whether it's dry or wet. In addition to this, the channel connection between the ponds is more of a natural creek setting so this will retain flow for a much longer period. And also when it does dry up, it'll retain somewhat of a chain of ponds for a period of time. It's a, a much easier environment for the turtles to move through. So the connectivity, the potential to move between ponds is much more or much greater in this peri-urban environment than in what we see in the urban environment. A further area where our study provided more information on the movement of turtles in Canberra's urban environment is the distances and times that the turtle move in the urban environment. So here we've got 
some previous work between 2006 and 2014 where turtles have been recorded moving about six kilometers in the urban environment between two ponds um, backwards and forwards. In 2020, we found a turtle at the blue dot you can see there on the left hand side of the slide that had been captured at the red circle dot towards the right hand side of the slide there in 2006. So it's been captured 14 years apart and about 15 kilometers uh, through the urban environment away from where we found it. So this again extends our information of how far and over what time frame the turtles are moving in the urban environment. In the urban environment we also saw changes in how the turtles or the turtles nesting behavior as compared to what we expect in the natural environment. In the natural environment turtles will usually move out of a pond up the slope and find a flat area and nest in a flat area. What we saw in the urban environment was that the turtles were nesting on slopes so they were generally coming out of the ponds and maybe because of the nature of the urban environment they were heading up the slope and then hitting a barrier in the main picture there you can see it's almost like a wall of grass and in the smaller picture on the left you can see it's up against a fence and what happened here is the turtles are laying or digging their nest against that barrier rather than finding the flat area that they would generally find in a more natural environment. Uh, you'll notice here that there's covers, uh, mesh cover over these nests. These nests are regularly predated. So we protected these nests when we found them also. And during the project, we found seven nests in West Belconnen and the peri-urban environment and three nests in the inner north or urban environment. Of the 10 nests that we found and protected, seven of these nests had hatchlings emerge in autumn from March to April this year, and the remaining three nests overwintered, but emerged in September this year. So this was a really nice outcome. I'm not sure whether it was due to the protection added to the next nests, but it likely influenced this, and it was great to have hatchlings emerge from all the nests that were located through this project. The data and the knowledge collected in this study feeds into urban planning and management decisions. Uh, Canberra's considered the bush capital and urban ecology plays an ever increasing role in some of the urban planning decisions for the capital. So understanding how urban connectivity affects the populations of animals within our urban environment is really important to feed into those decision-making processes. In addition to understanding how the turtle populations are influenced by the urban environment, there's the education and awareness benefits. We had approximately 50 volunteers on the project and they were all highly engaged. Hopefully got some good education and awareness outcomes. And there was also lots of passes by these ponds are regularly used by the community as recreation areas and lots of families and groups come down to see what we're doing and got some awareness of the urban ecology in their area. So fortunately, this isn't the end of the project. Uh, there's funding for future work to be undertaken in 2021-22, where we plan to do more captures so we can uh, have more data so we can accurately estimate the population numbers on a capture mark recapture basis we can further investigate the nesting choice of the turtles in the urban environment and generally build on this year's data to better understand the movement of the turtles within the urban environment and so that's where we're currently up to with the project and just thanks for the opportunity to present our citizen science project here at the conference